In this lesson, we're going to provide you with an overview of the different types of long-term storage devices that you can use in a PC system. Now, remember with a PC, we need some type of long-term storage. We have our system memory. We have our RAM. And RAM works great as a storage device, right? We can read and write data to it very quickly. But RAM has some distinct disadvantages. Number one, it's relatively small. RAM is expensive. We cannot get a whole lot of data in there all at once. Number two, RAM is not persistent. This is the biggest problem with RAM. What happens if you power off your PC without saving the file that you were working on in RAM? It's gone, right? It's gone, it's history, it is no longer recoverable. RAM has to be constantly refreshed in order for the data it contains to remain intact. Well, that works great when we're working with something in process, right? We need something that has fast access that can be easily manipulated. RAM works great for that. RAM does not work great for long-term storage. We need a long-term storage device. We're going to talk about the different types of long-term persistent storage devices that we can use so that we can work on a PC, save our information, power the PC off, turn the PC back on at a later point, and have that data still available to us and have it intact. The first type of storage device we need to talk about is the good old floppy disk. Now, floppy diskettes are probably the oldest storage type of storage device in a given PC system. In fact, most PC systems that you purchase today probably won't have a floppy diskette anymore. And I'm kind of sad to see that because floppy diskettes, while they really aren't that great for saving lots of data because of their low capacity, floppy diskettes have saved me more than once when trying to troubleshoot a system. So I'm sad to see them go. Back in the old days, when you bought a PC system, say in the early 1990s, it was very likely that the only storage device you had in your system was a floppy diskette. Floppy disks, if you look at them, by the way, the newest floppy disks are not actually floppy, the old ones were, but the reason we call them floppy disks is because they have a mylar-coated disk inside of a sheath. And we're going to take a hypothetical floppy disk here. This is one of the newer 3.5-inch varieties. By the way, they did come in two varieties. This three and a half inch is the ones that you'll probably be most familiar with. The older varieties were five and a quarter, 5.25 inches. You don't see those anymore. These were actually truly floppy. If we take our three and a half inch floppy disk and split it in half, and by the way, you can do this at home if you wish, if you have an old floppy disk that you don't care about ruining because this will ruin it, then you can do this very thing. You can split it in half, and inside of this sheath, you'll find mylar disk that looks something like that. Now this mylar disk is coated with a magnetic surface material that allows you to read and write information from the disk. And it's double-sided, at least with newer floppy disk drives are double-sided. In the old days we had five and a quarter inch single-sided and three and a half inch single-sided disks where you could write to one side and then flip it over and write to the other, at least with five and a quarters. But you couldn't write to both sides at the same time. The latest versions of the three and a half and the five and a quarter inch floppy disk drives have two heads that read and write information at the same time. Now the heads, when you insert the disk in the floppy disk drive, access the surface of the mylar disk through the holes in the sheath. And there's one back here, which we can't see. We'll draw a little dashed outline to indicate where the hole is on the bottom side of the disk. And we have a head that comes up and grips the disk from the bottom side there too. And it's important to note that floppy disks, when you put it in, these heads actually make physical contact with the surface of the disk. And while that works really well, it also wears out the disk very quickly. If you have a floppy disk that's over about a year old and it still works, count yourself lucky because they usually don't. They just wear out because of the fact they make physical contact between the heads and the surface of the disks. Now, in order to protect disks, there's usually what's called a slide that slides over top of these holes. That's the little aluminum slide that you see on the bottom of a floppy disk. The floppy disk had several advantages. Number one, it was portable. It's very easy to take your diskette from one system to another. If you, need, if you had a file over here, you need to save it on the floppy disk, you could take it over to another computer and read the data off the floppy diskette, and you could move data back and forth between PCs. This was called a sneaker net. Instead of an ethernet, you had a sneaker net because you ran between systems with your sneakers. However, the floppy disk drive had some serious disadvantages. Number one, it had low capacity. The average floppy disk drive that you're going to be dealing with today stores 1.44 megabytes of data. That's not a lot of data in today's world. You just can't get enough data on them to make them worth it. 
that's one of the key reasons why floppies are just going out of style because you just can't get enough information on them. The other problem with them is they're slow. This disk only turns about 300 RPMs and you just cannot read and write data very quickly off a floppy disk drive. By contrast, every PC system that you buy off the shelf now will have another type of storage device in it and that's a hard disk drive. Hard disk drives are great. They address many of the limitations that we see with a floppy disk drive. They can store huge amounts of information and they're relatively fast. Let's take a look at how a hard disk drive works. If you were to take a hard disk drive and open it up, which by the way you should not do, because hard disk drives are sealed units. They are produced in an environment that is extremely clean. There is no dust in the air where these devices are made. And the air inside of the hard disk drive is absolutely and perfectly clean, as clean as we can get it anyway. If you open it up and allow regular air inside that has particulate matter in there, you're going to destroy the drive. So do not open up a hard disk drive that you intend to keep. Inside the hard disk drive are a series of platters. These are aluminum disks that are coated with a magnetic material that can be used to store data. Now there's an arm here, armature, and it has a head on it. This head is used to read and write information from the surface of the platter of the hard disk drive. Now unlike a floppy disk drive, the, the head on a hard disk drive does not actually touch the surface of the hard disk. Remember with a floppy disk, the, the heads actually grip the disk and that's why they wear out so fast. With a hard disk drive, it does not. And that's because this disk, when it spins, creates what's called a Bernoulli effect. The spinning of the disk creates a small cushion of air. So if you were to look at it edge on, these are the platters in your hard disk drive, you have the head up here, there's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little cushion of air right here between the surface of the platter and the surface of the head. It's close enough that the magnetism in the disk or the magnetism in the head can magnetize or demagnetize certain area of the hard disk drive to create our zeros and ones to store our binary data, but they don't actually touch. As I've drawn right here, instead of having a single platter, remember with the floppy disk drive, we just have a single mylar floppy disk inside there. With the hard disk drive, we have multiple platters. We have one, two, three, four, for example, in this system. Each of these platters is double-sided, meaning that you can read and write data from the top and the bottom. Each platter has its own set of read-write heads, one on the top and one on the bottom, something like this. These heads read and write information from the top and the bottom side of the disk. Now, a hard disk drive has lots of advantages. Number one, it's much faster than a floppy disk drive. Faster. Where a floppy disk drive turns around 300 RPMs, an inexpensive hard disk drive will turn around 5,400 RPMs. A good quality hard disk drive will do it at 7,200 RPMs. And a high-end drive will be 10,000 RPMs or faster. As you can see, the faster this disk turns, the more data that the head can read and write it within a given amount of time. Another advantage is capacity. Where a floppy disk, a good floppy disk drive, will store 1.44 megabytes, a hard disk drive can store gigabytes of data. In fact, depending on what year it is, you might be able to store between 100 gigabytes up to 350 gigabytes on up. Bigger and bigger hard drives are being made available each year. The one disadvantage is portability. Your off-the-shelf hard disk drive has to be installed inside the computer it's very difficult to take it out and move it to another computer. However, there are portable versions available that use a USB or Firewire interface that are excellent because you can unplug the hard disk drive from the USB port on one system, plug it into the USB port on another system, and immediately have that disk be available. In addition to floppy disk drives and hard disk drives, most PC systems that you're going to work with today have either a CD or a DVD drive. We will refer to both of these types of drives as an optical drive. Let's take a look at how an optical drive works next. Now an optical drive, as we said, can be either a CD or a DVD. And an optical drive works in a very different manner than a floppy disk or a hard disk drive. Remember with a hard disk drive or a floppy disk drive, we use read-write heads that are essentially magnets to magnetize or demagnetize areas on a surface of either a diskette or a platter in a hard disk drive. Optical drives do not use magnetism. Instead, what they use is light impulses to encode zeros and ones. 
Now, if you look at the bottom of a CD or DVD and you hold it to the light, you'll see that you see kind of a neat little rainbow effect going on. That's caused by the encoding on the bottom of the disk that's used to store binary 0 and 1 data. If we were to look at this disk edge on, and we had a very, very powerful microscope and we're actually looking at the surface, you'd see things that look like this. We would have pits and we would have lands. These are physical etchings in the bottom of the surface of the CD or DVD. What this creates is a system where certain areas of this disk reflect light and where other areas do not reflect light. Now imagine what would happen if we were to bounce a laser beam off of the bottom of this disk. And this disk we're spinning so the laser beam would go along and it would hit this area, this area, this area, this area, and this area. We would have areas that would reflect light, areas that wouldn't, areas that would reflect light, areas that wouldn't, areas that would reflect light. And by doing this, you can construct binary data. We could convert these light impulses into binary data. If we see an impulse, it's a one. If we don't see an impulse, it's a zero, or vice versa. Either way works, but we're encoding binary data. By doing this, we can read data off of the surface of the optical drive. Now, optical drives have some advantages over a hard disk drive or a floppy disk drive. Number one, they're very portable. You can take a CD or DVD disk from one system to another and very easily transfer data from one system to another. They store a fair amount of data, not as much as a hard disk drive, but a lot more than a floppy disk drive. A CD will hold around 700 megabytes of data. Some hold 680, some hold 700. A DVD, a single layer DVD, will hold 4.7 gigabytes. And a double layer DVD will hold twice that amount of data. We're still not anywhere near the, the amount of data that can be stored by a hard disk drive, but we're still holding a lot of data. Optical drives work great for long-term storage of stuff. One of the issues with an optical drive is that the data is either permanent or semi-permanent. If we purchased a CD or DVD from the store and it has physical etchings in the bottom, that data is persistent. It is permanent. You cannot erase it. It's a read-only. We called them CD-ROMs in the old days. Read-only memory. There was no way to write information to it. So that data is protected. Unlike a hard disk drive where someone could come along and say, oh, I need to get rid of that file. I don't need it anymore and delete something very important. You can't do that on a CD. Even if you have a rewritable, either CD or DVD, where you can physically rewrite the data that's on the disk, it still takes a little bit of effort. So you're not as likely to accidentally delete something that you wanted to keep. Now, one of the problems with CDs is that they are somewhat susceptible to damage. If you've ever put a CD in the storage bin in the car, you know what happens. You drive around and after a month you pull the disc out and all the bouncing around has scratched the surface of the disc and it's no longer readable. It's a very frustrating thing. Basically, we use optical devices to store music on CDs, videos on DVDs, or to back up information. For instance, if we have a big project we're working on, it's got two gigabytes of data, it's very important, we need to make a backup of it, great to pop in a burnable DVD, burn that data to DVD and put it in storage so that we know that if anything bad happens to the hard disk drive, we've got a backup copy. Now, there's one other type of storage device that we need to talk about before finishing this lesson, and it's very interesting. Remember when we started back at the beginning of this lesson, we talked about the fact that system RAM in your PC is great, it's very fast, but its key problems were its size and the fact that it's volatile, meaning if you turn the power off, you lose everything. Well, imagine what would happen if we were able to create a storage device that used a memory chip like RAM, but that was persistent and could be made fairly large so it would store a lot of data. Well, we're heading that direction, and I'm very interested to see where this ends up. These are called flash devices. Let's take a look at how flash devices work next. If we were to open up a flash device, for example, we're going to open up here hypothetically a USB thumb drive. Do not do this with a real one unless you'd want to avoid your warranty and risk that not you working anymore. If we were to open this up, though, we would see that instead of a platter or a mylar disc or optical surface, 
that we've talked about with other devices, we'd see rows of memory chips. Now the memory chips inside of a flash device is very different than the memory that's inside of a RAM chip. Remember with RAM, we have to have a constant supply of power. If we don't have a constant supply of power, the memory chips in RAM lose their contents. The data inside of it goes away. That is not the case with a flash device. This type of memory is called programmable, meaning that we can write information to the memory locations in these memory chips and then remove power from these chips and have the contents of the chips remain intact. That allows us to do some pretty interesting things. What we can do with a flash device is create a device such as a thumb drive here that can be plugged into a port on the PC and function basically as a hard disk drive. You can store data, read data, just like you would a hard disk drive. Only instead of writing data to a spinning platter, you're writing data to a memory location in a memory chip. Now, flash drives are not as big or as fast as a hard disk drive yet. I'm very interested to see the direction this goes because I can see within 10 years flash devices starting to replace hard disk drives. They have lots of advantages. Number one, they are very portable. You can take a flash drive, move it from one system to another, plug it in, remove it, move it to another system, and instantly have that data on those memory chips available to the system that it's connected to. Number two, it's relatively fast. Now at this point, Flash devices are not as fast as a regular hard disk drive, yet they are getting faster and faster and faster every year. I can see a point when it will become as fast as a hard disk drive, at which point, why have the hard disk drive anymore? Number three is capacity. A flash device does not store as much information as a hard disk drive at this point. If you go down to the computer store to buy a flash device, you'll probably find them in sizes ranging from as low as 512, maybe even 256 megs, upwards to 2 to 4 gigabytes. And that changes, you know, within a year, they'll probably be twice that size. So we're still dealing with a size that's less than a hard disk drive, but we are way bigger than a floppy disk drive, and we're getting to the point where we're way bigger than a CD, and approaching the point where we're bigger than a DVD drive as well. And one of the key things is that they are rewritable. Just as we can rewrite information on a hard disk drive, we can just as easily rewrite information on a flash device. The last advantage of a flash device is the fact that it's very small. Flash drives come in a variety of different types, different interfaces. For example, you can have a thumb drive which incorporates flash drive on a USB port. You can plug it into a PC and access the memory locations in the thumb drive through your USB connection. Now, Digital cameras, PDAs, and such use other types of flash drives. For example, for cameras, you might have CF memory, MMC memory, SD memory. These also are flash devices that store data. And if you have a card reader installed in your PC, you can stick a camera card in there and be able to use it just like a hard drive or a, a thumb drive as well. Now, the capacities, as I said earlier, on a flash device are not as much as a hard drive yet. But they're way more than a floppy, way more than an optical drive, and I dare say it won't be long before you start seeing flash devices become standard in most PCs. In this lesson, we talked about storage devices. We talked about the different types of storage devices that are currently available. We have floppy disk drives, 